So you're a rogue, you've made it all the way to level 60, you grinded, you quested, you slogged your way up through those levels, dying so many times, having to level first aid, not getting in groups for dungeons. Whereas these mages have been spell cleaving their way through dungeons, tearing through the levels, have nearly unlimited gold by boosting people, all their AoE farming. It's finally time to get back at the mages and time for the rogue vs mage 1v1s. Now this is probably one of the most fun to watch matchups in Classic WoW. Rogue v Mage is a very high mobility, very high paced matchup. Um, a lot of it comes down to cooldown. So what I'll do in this video is I'm going to break it down to a couple parts. First, I'm going to go into all of the typical mage abilities that they'll be using against you, what you have in your rogue toolkit to be able to counter that. And then I'll show you specifically in video form how to use some of these abilities in the way that at least I think is best. And then I will uh, show some better examples uh, of some really good duels that happened in the Classic Duelers League um, from both Sword Rogues and Dagger Rogues against mages and how they came out on top, what they did right, what they did wrong. And hopefully this will give you a very good picture of how you can beat uh, mages almost every single time. So if you just want to skip from one part to another, uh, check the video description. I'll put all the timestamps to all these different pieces in there. So to get into all the Mage CC abilities, you have their Frost Nova, which is on a 21 second cooldown. You have the possibility of getting a Frostbite proc from their Ice Armor, which basically puts you in the same thing as a Frost Nova, um, except it's just when you melee them when they're using that armor. And of course, Polymorph, where they could cheap you at range and keep you there. Um, in addition to these, they also have their Blink to get out of uh, any of our stuns, but not our incapacitate. So that can get them out of uh, Cheap Shot and Kindy Shot, but it cannot get them out of, say, Gouge or Sap or Blind. Um, they have their Ice Barrier, of course, which is a pretty large 826 damage shield, uh, in addition to their Mana Shield, which is another 570 damage. And unfortunately, these shields last quite a long time, so you can't just Sap and wait for them to fall off. And of course, um, Ice Block, which is their big one, uh, which they can use every five minutes. But of course, they also have Cold Snap, which is the equivalent to our preparation, which will reset the cooldowns of Frost Nova and on Ice Block and Ice Barrier. So that means that they can refresh that shield with Cold Snap, they can Ice Block again, and they can Frost Nova you again. So as you can see, basically what you have here is a mage that can get away from you every 15 seconds with Blink, and they can root you in place every 21 seconds with Frost Nova, and they can use Ice Block to kind of stall for these cooldowns to come back up after they've used them. And then they can even Cold Snap to force them to come back up again. And they can use Polymorph as well to try and reset to have these cooldowns come back up. So to compare our cooldowns and what we have to deal with the mage, we have of course our Sprint, which you should be specting to improve Sprint. I'll link a talent build in the description that I would typically use. And that can get you out of uh, the root, so the Frost Nova, but it's on a three and a half minute cooldown. Similarly with your Vanish, you could use this to get out of the Frost Nova as well, again on a three and a half minute cooldown. And of course your uh, Horde or Alliance Trinket, which is on a five minute cooldown to get out of the Polymorph. And Blind, again on a three and a half minute cooldown where you can try and hold the mage in place in certain situations. And just like their Cold Snap, we have preparation to reset all these cooldowns. And if you're a Gnome, you have the very fortunate situation of being able to get out of an extra Frost Nova using your Escape Artist. So outside of our classes toolkit, we also have a bunch of different items that you could utilize to push this matchup a little bit more in your favor as a rogue. But of course, keep in mind, the mage could be using similar things in their favor. The first, of course, is the grenades, thorium grenade or iron grenade if you're a little bit cheaper. And this is very useful to helping you close the distance after the mage blinks away from you. The Skull of Impending Doom is a quest reward you can use it to get out of a polymorph. So basically you'd pop this on uh, before the duel starts or when you're going to engage on a mage in the open world. Um, and you use the skull right before they're casting polymorph or right as they're casting it. 
and the dot from the Skull of Impending Doom will break you out of that polymorph so you can get back on the mage without having to use your PvP trinket. In addition to this, you have the Spider Belt, which is just a cloth item you can buy off the auction house from, I believe, Taylor's, and it will remove a Frost Nova from you on a 30 minute cooldown. And of course, if you have your full engineering leveled, the Frost Reflector or the Gyrofreeze Ice Reflector, or also its Fire Reflector, um, can be massive to reflect a full rank Frostbolt or full rank Fireball back at the Mage. Just make sure you're using some sort of cast bar that does show the rank of spell they're using. You don't want to waste this cooldown to reflect a level 1 Frostbolt back at them. Um, and of course, the Goblin Mortar is basically equivalent to a grenade, but you can use it in addition to the grenade, so it can be very useful to, again, close the distance on a mage. Uh, similar thing with the net, but of course you have to worry about backfiring, so this is something you might want to use when you're already in melee range, rather than trying to throw it out at them. And of course the Goblin Rocket Boots or Gnomish Rocket Boots to, again, try and close the distance. So that basically gets into the entire toolkit that you have and that the mage has, and again, as you can see, it comes down to a battle of cooldowns. Your cooldowns as a rogue are much longer than the mages, but they need to be more impactful for you to win this. If the mage can get out of your blind, get out of your, or make you use your vanish and sprint and you don't kill him in that time, you, he'll likely win this match because even if you expend your prep, he can expend his cold snap and he can just polymorph you. As soon as he can be able to reset the duel, and you don't have a blind or a vanish or a sprint to use, it's over because he'll just kill you in a Frost Nova. So it's super important that whenever you are in melee range of the mage, you take full advantage of that opportunity to burst as much damage as possible. First example here will be me opening up as daggers against a mage. You open with the sap so you can get some good setup. And then I go in with the ambush and try to get the gouge immediately with the ambush. The mage blinks in time so my gouge doesn't go off, but what can happen here is the gouge can get batched with their blink so that they can be gouged 15 yards away, which can be the perfect opportunity for you to get back in melee range without having to expend any cooldown. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case here. The mage goes for the polymorph and I go for the grenade. I'm a second too late and unfortunately I have to expend my PVP trinket. I use that PVP trinket and a grenade to catch back up to him and I'm able to go in on the mage. Now, typically at this point in the fight, you'd be sticking on the mage. You wouldn't use any further cooldowns, but just to show you guys, I've went ahead and blinded him here. He's ice blocked the blind, which is a very typical move. Be prepared for the Frost Nova. You have your improved sprint to break out of it. And get back up on the mage. Gouge to stop his cast. You could also kick there to block his school of magic. And finish him off with the backstab. Okay, and another one here. You'd open up again with a sap on the mage. Wait a few seconds to get your re-stealth. And be ready for the ambush gouge. Again, you want to open with the sap just so you can have really good positioning to be able to get perfectly in place for to try to get that gouge off because it can be a little difficult to be perfectly on top of them if they're not sapped. Ambush, gouge. Once again, the mage blinks just in time, goes for the polymorph, PvP trinket immediately, grenade to catch back up. Once again, he frost novas. Sprint to break it, you're back in place. This is an example of what happens if the mage uses ice block too early. You then have your blind free for when they're out of it. Now they can't get away from you. And you get a full reopen on the mage. They don't have frost nova, they don't have blink, and they don't have ice block. You still have a vanish in this case, and your prep if they use their cold snaps. This is a great spot to be in. But since they're already at half, you just open up with the ambush, finish them off. Okay, and I've got one last example here to show you of just how I go about dueling mages as a dagger rogue. Once again, we're going to go for an opener with a sap. As you can see in the bottom right, I've pre-equipped my Skull of Impending Doom and my Spider Belt just in case I need them. 
and I'm going to go for the same opener for an ambush gouge once again. Unfortunately, the sap breaks early and now the mage is free. So we need to catch up without getting caught out of stealth. So I open up again with an ambush, try to go for the gouge, can't get it, and queue up my grenade immediately. I'm also ready to hit my skull of impending doom in case the mage does go for the polymorph, as my PvP trinket is still on cooldown. He goes for the frostbolt, I get my grenade off, and now the mage is in trouble because he's already expended his blink, which means you're able to use kidney shot to hold him in place, leaving you for the easy win here. So that's all I wanted to show about the basics of the matchup. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight on how to open and what to do. And now I'm gonna get into some of the more detailed things using some examples from the classic Duelers League. So here we have Guzu up against Maui Wowie. Guzu opens up with an ambush, goes for the gouge immediately, doesn't quite get it. And Maui Wowie gets a frostbite proc off the frost armor right off the bat, leaving Guzu stuck in place he uses his sprint to get out of it the mage does not blink here as they usually would so guzu is able to catch up really easily gets the gouge off on maui waui who's now stuck in that gouge guzu is gonna take a couple seconds to let energy tick back up and get a little bit more damage here with the backstab unfortunately the mana shield ate all of it and now he's nova he uses his vanish to break out of the nova Reopens up. The mage grenades him. He evisces. He throws his grenade out. And the mage is going to ice block here to prevent that last bit of damage from finishing him. And again, doesn't opt for the blink. I'm not sure why. Probably just nerves from being in the tournament here, but. This is what can happen to a mage if you're able to stick on them like this. If they stick in your melee range and don't kite away, you're able to pump out quite a bit of damage on them. So they're going to go two matches and you can see that Guzu just equipped his Skull of Impending Doom. So he's ready to break out of that polymorph. Also, if you take a quick look at his cooldowns, he didn't expend his prep in the duel. He just uses it to reset his cooldowns before the second duel. And remember that the mage did use his ice block. So he'll have to cold snap as well to get his ice block back up if he wants it. But more likely what would happen is the mage would opt to frost nova first, then be able to cold snap to get the frost nova and ice barrier back up in addition to the ice block, rather than doing what the rogue did, which is to use it prep at the beginning of the duel. So once again, he opens with the ambush. This time he gets the gouge off, and now you can see the mage is in big trouble. Even though the frostbite proc went off, he, the frostbite wears off before the gouge. Guzu gets big damage off with the backstab. Unfortunately, gets hit by another frostbite proc. So again, has to use his sprint to get out of it. Then the mage can Nova him to keep him in place. Guzu blinds him, but the mage did not cold snap in time after his frost Nova. So he is stuck in that blind, unable to ice block. So this is again, another big mistake that came out here. The rogue is able to just wait it out. Goes for the big ambush, Evis, thinking he'd finish him off. Maui gets the Ice Barrier Refresh, so Guzu has to go for a Vanish to break yet another Frostbite proc. But he can just sap him, and it's pretty much over at this point. Guzu just waits out his energy to retick back up. The Mage is now out of cooldowns, so Guzu can just reopen with a big ambush and finish him off. Fortunately, he gets caught out of stealth, but it doesn't matter because just the backstab and evis damage were enough. To show a different perspective, I have Duop against Drexer here. I believe they're both rank 14 as well. Duop is a sword rogue though, so he has a little bit of a different opener. He opens up with a sap here and goes for the cheap shot without doing damage to Drexer to build up those free combo points. You can see he now has three combo points already. He'll re-stealth and reopen with a cheap shot. As you can see, he's now up to the full five combo points, goes for the immediate Cold Blood Eviscerate for the big damage to break through that Ice Barrier, Mana Shield, and bring Drexer to 80%. Unfortunately, in this spec, Duop didn't have improved Sprint, so he has to use Vanish and then Sprint to catch back up to Drexer because he got hit by that Frostbite proc. He gets grenaded and then Goblin Mortared. Luckily, Drexer's Frost Nova misses, but he goes for the Polymorph. Duop 
gets in range for the gouge, can get a little bit more damage off, is hit by another Frostbite proc. Drexer goes for the Polymorph. Duop has to prep and use another Vanish. Again, he's trying to get back into range here. Drexer does a good job of starting to AoE. Duop expends another Sprint, gets caught out of stealth, unfortunately gets hit by another Frostbite proc into the Cone of Cold that crits because of Shatter. Blinds, Drexer immediately ice blocks the blind, can now Frost Nova. Duop's fully out of cooldowns, and this is what I was talking about. This mage won that cooldown fight. Duop just stands there and just forfeits the duel because he knows it's over, unfortunately. So this is what can happen. You get some unfortunate frostbite procs, and this is why improved sprint can be so important in these duels. But in such a tournament with so many different matchups, many of the rogues chose to go for a cold blood prep build with Hemo rather than going for an improved sprint build to do better against some matchups. But unfortunately, it sacrifices some of their power against mages. Lastly, I have this incredible duel between Peo and Zaryu, two of the best players at their respective classes in the world. And luckily, without the tournament nerves that can come with these dueling tournaments, so we see some really top-notch play here. So you can see that Peo has his Skull of Impending Doom and his Spider Belt equipped for this duel, and he is swords with that Cold Blood prep build as well. So he goes for the Sap opener, goes for the Cheap Shot to build combo points, similar to what Duop just did in that last one. He re-stealths, opens with the cheap shot, the Avis with the cold blood up to get through all the shields, the immediate grenade, but Zaryu is already grenading him back. Peo vanishes though, and it makes it so the grenade doesn't hit him. Gets back on Zaryu, and I'm slowing it down a bit more here just so you can see everything that goes on. So Peo was just hit by a frostbite proc off of the ice armor from Zaryu. So he blinds him to keep him in place. Zaryu immediately ice blocks the blind. Peo uses his spider belt to get out of the frostbite proc and then he goes for the net but unfortunately it backfires but he's immune to it because of the spider belt and he's also immune to that frost nova right there because of the spider belt and then you can see that little light on him that was not evasion that's his gnomish cloaking device so he's using that to try and get back into stealth Zaryu tries to polymorph him but now Peo is invisible for a second because of the cloaking device but Zaryu immediately blizzards him to get him out of it so Peo can't re-stealth. So Peo's forced to sprint and then vanish to get back on him. Again unfortunately Peo does not have that improved sprint in his build. His vanish though lets him get back in. Cheap shot Zaryu blinks immediately and goes for the polymorph and unfortunately Peo didn't use his skull of impending doom in time and this is again at that point Peo's gone through all of his cooldowns in a very smart manner and that level of play would have let Peo beat basically any mage in the world except probably Zaryu who is one of the top pvp competitors both in classic when he did play it and currently in retail in arena so i think this matchup really shows all of the different tricks and tools you can use as a rogue to try and beat a mage and it really shows the importance of being able to predict what the mage is going to do before he does it so you can react very quickly so if you know that a frost nova is going to come out and you have your spider belt equipped you have your spider belt used basically as the frost nova hits you so that you can immediately stick on the mage without having to expend something like sprint or a grenade to catch back up because they might have pulled a little bit farther away of that distance so being able to predict what's going to happen allows you to have a much faster reaction time to what happens again this just comes with practice and experience and being able to use all your tools time and time again so thank you guys so much for watching the video Please check out everything in the description. I'll put timestamps to all these different sections if you want to come back to them. I have links to the Classic Duelers League website, to Tips Out Stream, who puts on the Classic Duelers League, to all of the different rogues videos that I've used here. You can go to all their different Twitch channels and watch them play some very high tier play from these rogues, some of the best in the world. As well as a link to a video from North the Mage that 
explains the opposite side of this matchup. So how to beat rogues as a mage. If you really want to take this to the next not to the next level, then I would recommend watching his video to see what mages might be thinking when they're going up against you. And as always, please, if you like the video, like it, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And if you have anything you'd like to add, any different tips or tricks you use against mages, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one.